Hey, what's up, beautiful people? Thank you so much for joining my channel, The Balan Lay Babe. Balan Lay means finds wealth at home, and that's exactly what we're about here on this channel, finding our wealth at home by budgeting and saving via our cash envelope systems. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Rita, and if you're returning, let's jump right into this video. All right, guys, so today I'm coming to you with a cash expense cash out and talk through for our May paycheck number two. We have been utilizing our credit card for this pay period. And so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at what our expenses have been so that we can go ahead and pay ourselves back and get that money back onto our credit card. So without further ado, um, let's take a look at how I did. <laughs> and I also wanna say, do not beat yourself up if you go over budget. Um, I mean, of course, if you go crazy and you go way over budget, then you definitely have to reevaluate um, however, if you go a little bit over budget, there are ways that you can reconcile. And I definitely went over budget in a few categories. Um, this pay period for good reason, however, not frivolous, crazy spending for good reason. Um, but you'll see how I was able to reconcile that and still come out pretty close to on budget. Okay. All right. Let's jump right in. All right, guys. So we are going to go ahead and open up our budget book here. So we are going to flip to our expenses page for this pay period. So I will let you guys take a quick look at my expenses here. I thought that it was pretty cool that, or not pretty cool, just um, interesting, however, how I used exactly how many lines were here. And also my total expenses totaled up to $1,000 exactly this pay period. So I thought that was interesting. Um, just an FYI, in case you can't tell, I do round. So if something costs $5.65, I'm gonna go ahead and round it to $6. So um, let's go ahead and jump in. I have my expenses on this page. And on this page, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put them into buckets for my sinking funds. And then we will basically just break down what I spent from that particular sinking fund category and then what was left over. Okay, I'm going to grab my red pen because I want to make sure that if I go over budget that I do mark that in red so it's easy for me to call out and see um, that I did go over. All right, so I got my red pen here. Um, hopefully we don't have to use it too much. Um, but I did want to call out attention to how I actually broke down my expenses here. So if you guys will see that there are some dates that repeat, so like 522 is here four times, um, and you'll see that it's all for the same store. So what I did go ahead and do ahead of time, I keep all of my receipts. Um, I actually probably need a better system for my receipts, but I just have them like all over the place here. <laughs> so of course I first scanned them in the Fetch app. If you are not aware of what Fetch is, um, I will insert a clip here of what Fetch is. Um, I just started using it myself and I think I've been using it for a few weeks now, but basically what you do is you scan all of your receipts and you basically get points um, for one, just scanning your receipt in general, but two, for specific items that you purchase will sometimes get higher points. You can also get points for referring family and friends. So I always keep my Fetch Rewards link in the description box. Thank you to those of you who have actually utilized it. I've never actually verbally spoke about Fetch Rewards on my channel, but a few of you have found it in my description box and have made a point to sign up yourselves. And so I appreciate that. Um, because if you do sign up, not only do I get 2,000 points, but you also get your first 2,000 points. I definitely wanted to put that plug out there in case anyone else is interested um, to kind of join the Fetch Rewards journey, then you definitely can use my link to sign up. And like I said, you will get some points and then you can refer your own family and friends as well. So after I scan my receipts, what I do is I then will just break it down by category for that particular receipt. So for instance, for Rite Aid, on May 22nd, um, 
It was one store trip. However, it broke itself into four different sinking fund or cash envelope categories. And so that's the way that I find it easiest to kind of track it. Um, like I mentioned before, I do want to get some colored pens so that I can color code um, the different sinking funds and or cash envelopes to make it easier visually on myself. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to go uh, cash envelope category or sinking fund category step by step and see if I spent anything out of those, total it up and write it over here. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and start with our cash envelopes and we're going to go through category by category and see if we spent anything out of those envelopes. And if we did, we'll go ahead and reconcile. Um, also, I brought some wine to the party, guys. I hope you don't mind. This is a late night unstuffing, so I figured why not? All right. So let's go ahead and start with our spend or our miscellaneous spending category. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we spent. So it looks like we spent $9 here at Rite Aid. Um, and guys, if I can remember what the expense was, I'll definitely tell you because I know some of you guys like the way that I actually talk through my expenses. So that was $9 at Rite Aid, um, $20 on Amazon. So this $20 was for one of those, like, it was a gift for my son, my four-year-old. He really wanted one of those, like, gem excavation kits where, like, you have to dig for the gem, basically. And I got it for him. Just FYI, if anybody gets one of these for their kids, make sure they do this activity outside because it gets messy. Oh, my God. But he really enjoyed it, so I don't regret that. Um, another miscellaneous $5 at Rite Aid. I'm not sure what that one was. I just can't remember rather. Um, $23. So speaking of my four-year-old, um, we spent another $23 at Rite Aid. This was actually a late night run. Um, my four-year-old actually spiked a pretty high fever out of nowhere on Memorial Day on Monday. Um, and so I ran out and got some medicine. I got some of those like fever cooling forehead pad things and you know, some Gatorade for him, um, or a Pedialyte rather. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, it came to 23 bucks. It was necessary. He is okay. It just was a fluke. I don't know. We never left the house. We barely go anywhere. So I, I, I don't know what that was about, but he is definitely much better now. Um, and then $25 at the hardware store. So you guys know that we got some work done on our porch because I talked about that in prior videos and how we spent about $1,500 getting some of that work done. While we did go and purchase some new paint rollers and things of that sort, we already had paint, leftover paint in the basement, but we had to do some touch-up work um, just to make some you know, where they replace certain wood pieces to make them match to our existing frames and all of that stuff. So we were out there painting this weekend and that was an extra 25 bucks. Um, and yeah, so we spent $82 in miscellaneous. So I'm not gonna worry about the date category, but I will write our miscellaneous spending. And we spent $82. Ooh. All right. So debit amount was $82. So let's see how much we actually had in here. So in miscellaneous spend, we currently have 20, 30, 40. So definitely short, so let's do subtract 42. Oh no, we had 82 minus 40. That leaves us with negative 42. All right, so we're starting off with a bang there, y'all. <laughs> um, but don't get discouraged, we are gonna figure this out. All right, so next category is going to be our groceries. So for groceries, we spent $108 at ShopRite. I don't know if you guys are noticing, but I haven't been going to Aldi. Like I said, it's just pure laziness. All of these stores that you guys see on here that are repeat stores are because 
they are really close to my house. They're either in walking distance or a two minute drive down the street. I live in an area that is really close to like a really poppin main through, um, like main drive through street or like, am I saying that right? A main pass through street. Like it's a street that goes from one neighborhood into another and like you can just drive it like all the way through the city. And so there's, you know, restaurants and um, small boutiques and hair salons and, you know, 7-Elevens and Targets. And like, I basically live around whatever I need to get to. And guys, they are building a home goods. Ah, I'm going to be in so much trouble. But <laughs> that's neither here nor there. We were talking about groceries. Focus, girl. All right. So 108 at Rite Aid. Um, then we spent $5 at CVS. That was for some creamer, coffee creamer. They didn't have the type I wanted at uh, ShopRite. Then grocery, grocery. $6 at Rite Aid. have no idea what that was. And $28 at Target. That was for snacks. We had like a movie night at home. And so we just went out and got some goodies. All right, so that's 147 bucks that we spent in grocery. Okay, so 147. Let's see what we got in here. So in groceries, we have... Oof. All right. We have 50, 100, 120, 130, 140, 145, 146, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51. All right, so we have $151 minus the 147. That is going to leave us with four bucks. So we are in the positive here. So that's great news. All right, so then our home category. So we start off with $6 at Dollar Tree. So guys, I go to Dollar Tree faithfully every single pay period. I get my cleaning supplies from there. I get like paper plates. I get paper forks and knives if I need them um, and spoons. Like, But my cleaning stuff, guys, Dollar Tree, do not sleep on it. I get my bleach. I get my Fabuloso. I get my Dawn dish detergent. Like, yeah, I get everything from there. But this time I only spent six bucks, um, five bucks at Rite Aid. Five bucks at CVS. Uh, did I miss any? 20 bucks at Rite Aid. That probably was paper towels or toilet paper or something. And yeah, so it looks like we spent 36 bucks in our home category. All right, let's see how much we had. All right, so in home, we have 10, 20, 25, 30. All right, so bringing back that red pen, we are negative six bucks. It's okay, I told you, we're gonna figure it out. All right, so next category is going to be gas. So for gas, I, I haven't gone anywhere, guys. Like, I'll stay home, I promise you. So we got 20 bucks and 20 bucks, so. We did really good with gas this, this go round. So in gas, we have 20, 40, 45. I could have swore I stuffed 50. All right. So 50 bucks is what I stuffed the prior pay period. But last pay period, I only stuffed 45. So 40, what are we doing? 45 minus 20 is 25 bucks left over in gas. All right, so we have 25 bucks left over in gas. All right, so coffee, let's see. Coffee, we did spend three bucks. And that's it, so three bucks. So we still have our free coffee coupon. And then we have five, six, seven, eight. So perfect. I actually got coffee um, just the other morning. So that's where this other $2 went. But that leaves us with five bucks in coffee. So. All right. 
So that's it for our cash wallet. So we only got red twice so far. So let's keep our fingers crossed that we can keep this pattern up. So now let's pull out our personal binder and see what we've spent. So personal savings, we don't debit out of there. So there wouldn't have been anything taken out of this one. New car, we don't take out of there either. Spending, did not have any money to begin with. Um, beauty and self-care. I do believe I definitely took out of there, yes. So beauty, $17 at Rite Aid. $7 at CVS. $4 at Rite Aid. And guys, these are probably like, I don't know, nail glue, hair products. Yeah, like I'm trying to think of what it could be. Um, did we do the $4? I think we did. Hopefully we did. Um, Self-care. Okay, so this $26 down here, $26 at um, Target. I do know what that was. That was basically... Um, me and my daughter, guys, she's only 10, but she's starting to get like some acne, um, like on her chin and things of that sort. So, you know, she's so young, but kids start going through puberty like so much sooner now. So, um, you know, she's definitely at that self-conscious stage. And so I just took her and got her some, you know, age appropriate, you know, face wash and things of that sort so that she could feel a little bit more comfortable. And I kind of just like taught her about a routine. So that was 54 bucks. So, all right, we've moved on from cash envelopes. Now we're on sinking funds. So this is beauty. All right, so let's see what we have in here. So in beauty and self-care, we have 20, 40, 45, 50. So we almost made it, but we are still negative $4. All right, social outings, we didn't have anything. Girls trip, we did not take anything out of there, but we are about to have just about, just a little over a week, guys. I leave next Friday. Um, family fun, so we definitely spent out of family fun. I remember, so Rite Aid, we spent $11 and $20 we spent at the movies for a total of 31 bucks. Yeah, so the $11 is actually candy that we snuck in in mommy's purse. Don't judge me, guys, but <laughs> I've never bought candy at a movie theater, and I don't think I ever will. I can get a piece of candy at Rite Aid for a dollar and some change. I am not paying five, six dollars for the same piece of candy at the movie theater. Yeah, judge me if you want to, but... It is what it is. So we grabbed our snacks. Mommy had her never full, dumped it all in there. And guys, honestly, it was a great experience going to the movies because there was no one there. It was so empty. It felt like we had the theater to ourselves. The kids enjoyed themselves, so that's all that matters. Um, and this is when my husband was actually still away, so it was just me and the kids that went. So family fun. We actually had a AMC gift card. Um, I found this, I actually found a few gift cards in one of my old purses that I never used. And so I checked it to see if it was still valid and it was, so I was like, bet, we're going to the movies. So there was actually $30 on here alone. So that paid for um, some of our stuff. Um, but then we still had, you know, the expense of 20 more dollars for our tickets and then the $11 at, that we spent at Rite Aid. So, and here we have an additional, 20, no, addition, yeah, 10, 20, 25, and 30. All right, so we're just short $1. That's not a big deal. I mean, it is a big deal because there's a lot more red going on there, but all right, so what was it? It was 31, 31 bucks. And this was family fun. Okay, so that is it for this binder. So now we have our purple binder. All right, 
So travel. So travel, guys, I have some bad news, guys. And I was debating if I was going to share it on here yet, but I think I can go ahead and share it because it's like 99% confirmed. And that is that we have officially postponed our trip to Africa in August. And here's why. Um, basically, when we originally made the plan to go to Africa as a family in August, if, you, if you're new here, my husband, um, he does contract real estate work in Ghana. Um, and so he goes to Africa every few months, um, usually for either a week or two weeks at a time. And so he was over there for work back in February. And when he came home, you know, he just was like, you know, I really want to bring you guys out there for your first time. Let's see if we can make it happen. Now, when he goes out there, he gets buddy flights. So with the buddy flights, you only really have to pay the taxes. And most of the time, tickets to go over to, to Ghana or any part of Africa, really, are usually upwards of a thousand plus dollars round trip. They're not cheap at all. That's per person. So for the last couple of times that he's went during the COVID pandemic, the taxes that he's had to pay on his buddy pass tickets, um, he's had a few free flights, you know, because for his job, sometimes they cover it completely for him. Um, he doesn't have to come out of pocket sometimes, but when he does for the taxes for the buddy flights, it's really only been about two or $300. So we kind of had our minds set on that. However, unfortunately, things are starting to get back to normal and the prices, the taxes have raised on some of the tickets. And so we got quoted about $800 per person. Now, that's still not bad, but it was $800 per person that we were not budgeting for. And that's completely fine. We were still going to bite the bullet and we were still considering it. Here's why now things absolutely changed. So quick, this is a quick story time, guys. Sorry, I'm going off tangent. But um, where my husband owns property in Ghana, it was a, a newly developed neighborhood Um brand spanking new, absolutely gorgeous. I'll see if I can find a picture and submit it here. Um, but it's only about two years old and the majority of the units that were purchased in this enclosed neighborhood in, um, in Ghana were primarily purchased by individuals who do not live on the continent. Um, they were primarily purchased by um, diaspora are African Americans who wanted to go and purchase land and have kind of like a home away from home um, where they can go and travel and bring their families and things of that sort, which is exactly why my husband first invested in, you know, a place there. However, what they found is that there are a lot of people who actually live in Ghana who would love to live in this brand spanking new neighborhood because there's tons of new neighborhoods like this that are popping up and they are flying off the shelves. And all of the units in this neighborhood are completely purchased. It's a completely sold out neighborhood. And like I said, majority of the people who own them don't live there. And so um, there are individuals who are looking to rent these places out. And the um, housing development has actually been contacting the owners of some of the, some of the properties that are technically vacant, you know, they have furniture in them and things of that sort, but nobody's actively staying there throughout the year and basically made propositions to, for them to become landlords and to rent to local residents for long-term leases. So we were propositioned to um, take on a tenant for a two-year lease. And it was one of those situations where it's kind of like, ah, uh, extra income and opportunity that may or may not come again. And, you know, after a long consideration, we decided that that was the best thing to do. And so my husband actually was just out there um, this month. Yeah, he was just out there just a few weeks ago and finalized all the paperwork and all of that things. So there's now a tenant in that house, which is where we were going to stay when we went to go to Africa. So now that would be another additional expense that we would have to pay if we went out there. So we still were considering it. Here's the kicker, guys. Here's why we officially decided to postpone. $2,000.
in COVID fees alone. I'll just let that sit right there. $2,000 in COVID fees alone for the entire family to go over there. Um, and that also doesn't include malaria pills, yellow fever shots, and a few other healthcare steps that we need to take to safely get over there. Now, safety is first, and I would never jeopardize my family's safety. However, it, that's just a lot. Um, and it was an expense that we kind of, it kind of slipped our mind. We weren't thinking about it um, because when my husband goes, it's just him. So things began adding up really quickly. So now we have this 2K plus in health and COVID fees. We have to now find a place to stay while we're out there because my husband's property is no longer an option. It has a tenant in it now. Um, and then the fight, flight prices that we originally budgeted for are now about $500 um, higher a piece, and there's five of us. So we just postponed it. We have not figured anything else out. We are still going to do something this summer, but it will not be Africa as of right now. However, we still are going to move forward with going ahead and getting everybody's visas so that when we do decide to go, we can just go with no issues. So we are going to go ahead and deplete this envelope. We have 100, 200, 250, 300, 320, 340, 360, 380, uh, 400, 410, 20, and 30. All right. So sorry I thought it was a long explanation and story too, guys, but I definitely did want to just share what was going on with that whole trip. Um, so yeah, this, this is a travel folder. I really, it started to rip on me, so I was being too rough with it. So maybe I should make a new one and call it the vacation folder um, because, yeah, we're going to have to figure something out. But we definitely still have to do something this summer, whether it's something a little bit more local like Florida or whether it's something really local where we just go to the beach and maybe stay for a week. So we'll, we'll figure it out, guys. Um, and so we've depleted that. There's now zero in there. Okay, holidays we did not spend out of, kids allowance we didn't spend that out of, well, we did do kids allowance, but it's not something that needs to go on here. No school rewards and no clothing. Okay, so pets. So pets we definitely did spend for, and I made a mistake, guys, because in my last cash stuffing, I forgot to budget for pets. I definitely needed to, but it slipped my mind. Therefore, that should already tell you that we overspent for this category. Um, but we spent $3 at Rite Aid for pets. I think that was for like when I first noticed that my cat needed food and it was late. So I just went and grabbed like three little cans. Um, then $9 was for cat litter. Had to think about that. Um, $15 on Amazon. That was for some bulk wet cat food that I got my cat. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah, so 27 bucks for pets. However, this, this envelope is empty, guys. <laughs> so that's going to be negative 27. Okay. All right. Birthdays, nothing. Medical, dental, nothing. Car maintenance, nothing. So I think we got everything. Let me just go through and double check these categories. Business. Okay. So business, we did spend quite a bit of money on Amazon getting some supplies for business purposes. So you guys, my store is about to open up. I know it's been a long time coming. Um, but yes, we're almost there. So I apologize to those who... I had informed a while ago that I was going to be opening my store, but I didn't want to rush and I got really busy with work and I'm just now getting things together. So I will be making a video about that coming up this week, I promise. Um, but we spent $170 and this actually came out of my business account. So my Balanle Boutique, if you don't know, I have a, um, a beauty and a skincare business and I basically fronted myself $170 out of that business bank account to fund for my budgeting um, supplies and accessories business that I am going to be 
opening very soon. So I just paid that straight out of that account so we don't have to take that out of any envelopes or anything like that. Um, and yeah, so it looks like we got all the categories. I'm just gonna add this up really quick just to make sure that it equals a thousand. And it does, it equals $1,000. All right, so I'm just going to write on here total $1,000. Okay, so we spent a total of $1,000. So let's calculate what our actual budgeted amount was. And the way that I'm gonna do this is by calculating how much money we actually had in our cash envelopes and our sinking funds to pay for what we spent. So we only have really budgeted, let me see, I gotta get this money in order really quick. One second. One hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. One hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, two, four, six, eight, five hundred, two, four, six, eight, six hundred. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 700. 710, 15, 16, 17. <laughs> what did I do? 700, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. All right, so 754 in cash. And then if we add back our $170 that we actually already took out of our business account, we budgeted that. Oops. So that leaves us with $924 that we technically budgeted. So if we do $1,000 minus $924, that leaves us with $76. All right, so um, I forgot already what that amount was. $924. Okay, so again, that leaves us with $76 to come up with for our budget. So what I'm going to do, um, if you guys remember, I had this money tucked away here. So this is actually 30 bucks. And this is 30 bucks left that I had from my buffer account. I actually had took out my $100 buffer and I had it in cash because I was giving my husband um, some money to utilize for something that we had going on and he only ended up using $70 of it. So that leaves 30. So we are gonna put this 30 towards that. So that leaves us with, ooh, I did that completely wrong. So 1,000 minus the 9, 24 minus the 30, that leaves us with 46 bucks. So now what we can do is we're going to see what we have in rollover. And what I mean by that is we did not spend all of the money that was in our cash envelopes. And as much as I would like to keep this in here and roll it over, I think it's better for us just to see how much there is so that we can try to account for our overspending. So we didn't have anything left in spend, nothing left in grocery. Nothing left in home. We have money left in gas and money left in coffee. Okay. So we have 
20, 25, 30 that we can now roll over. So minus 30. So that leaves negative $16 that we overspent. All right, this is what I was talking about in the beginning, guys, when I said that if I would have just used my cash that I had on hand, I probably would not have overspent um, because, you know, the only reason that we were able to get it down to negative $16 was because I did have my buffer. I had some money left over my buffer. And then because I did have a little bit of money left in rollover. So, you know, it's, it's a tricky game when you're swiping your card versus using actual cash. But hey, you know what? I still think we did not end up too bad this pay period. But what I'm going to do to begin to reconcile moving forward is I think I'm going to start doing weekly check-ins with you guys to keep myself a little bit more accountable. And with those weekly check-ins, even if I use my card or if I use cash directly, at least that way, I will have a midway checkpoint to kind of, you know, again, just check myself and keep myself accountable for how much money I actually have left. So let's go ahead and just recount this amount to see how much we are going to actually be putting on our credit card today. We are going to be putting 100, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400. 2, 4, 6, 8, 500, 2, 4, 6, 8, 600, 2, 4, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 700, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 800, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So $814 will be going back on our card plus the 170 that we already had. That's 984. 1000 minus the 984 leaves us with negative 16. So we definitely calculated everything and just double checked. And it is what it is, guys. That is how we balanced out our expenses for this pay period. We are $16 in the hole, but we will be able to cover that with our buffer in our account. So that leaves us with $0. So we've reconciled it out. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I will see you guys in the next one, which will be my budget. Um, I did work out the kinks with my budget, so I think I know exactly how I want to go about setting up my monthly budget in the budget book moving forward. So if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I love you all. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Hey, beautiful people. Thank you so much for watching my video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You can also hit that post notification bell to never miss a video on my channel. I'll see you in the next one.